Welcome back to Decon Nation, everyone. It's Travis here with the new 22 M3X drive. So today is first wash day. I want to document the process for you guys. I do have a few different products that I'm excited to use that I haven't used before. Um, they haven't been on my previous wash videos, so I'm excited to share those with you, give, me, give you my initial thoughts as I haven't tried them out yet, and if it's something I'm going to keep using and stick around. But so today is just a, uh, you can call it a maintenance wash, but uh, I'm not maintaining any coating. It's just the first wash. I'm gonna wait on the coating and um, I'm gonna wait on the whole decon process after I get window tint. And after I do a couple other little things uh, that I'll make some videos on, uh, but we're not quite ready for that process yet. Um, so I'm excited about this to share it with you guys. The car is filthy, as you can see, if you watch my intro video, um, but that's okay because I get to see the transformation today and have it clean for the week with this beautiful weather. So I'm excited to have you guys along. So stick around, let's get started. All right, everyone. So we're gonna start with the wheels, as always, dirtiest part of the car, and finish that first. Um, so this is the passenger side rear wheel. As you can see, that's where I got it set up to do first. Uh, again, if you didn't see the intro video, maybe you can see a little better here, the floating hubcaps. So I think they're kind of cool and just stay um, they say kind of centered in gravity fit, I guess, to be level while driving. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so if you've been around the channel before, you've seen the equipment I use. There's a couple different things today that I'm going to use. Um, so this is the Obsessed Garage gun that I have with a 40 degree nozzle. This gun's on a swivel to the Obsessed Garage hose and active ultimate pressure washer setup package, which I've loved ever since I got it. So it's been great. So um, wheel and tire cleaner. Adam's wheel and tire cleaner. I've been using it for a while so I found it a couple years ago and I just really like it. Um, I've used Brake Buster once and I'll probably use it again because I have a couple of bottles but the Adam's one just works well to me. So I have my wheel bucket, clean water in here um, just with my brushes. So I'm gonna spray the product on. I you know, use the brush, I rinse off the brush with the pressure washer to clean the dirt out, and then I put it back in the water. Um, so some of the things I use, this is an easy detail. I don't know what they call it, but I just call it a, a wheel brush. So I get in the spokes really well with it. Um, I have a lug nut brush to get in some smaller areas. This, I don't necessarily use it very much or need to. This is an Adams tire brush. Um, it's rubberized, or I should say it's a wheel brush rubberized around the edges and the bristles are still kind of stiff I think I'm not crazy about it but a little bit softer than I say a wheel brush I have this lamb skit lamb skin mitt so to really hand wash and getting all the spokes which I like and then this is the new one so I had the uh, oh now I'm drawing a blank on the name um, tough shine tire brush which was like six bucks and I had linked it in my other videos by the way I link all these products for you in case you're just curious how much they are where I buy them from um, it's all in, in the description but Obsessed Garage came out with this detail factory brush that they switched to uh, for the tire itself and the bristles are a little longer a little softer first time I use it is today so we're gonna see uh, how good it is but everybody's kind of raving over it and I think this is about like 15 bucks versus six dollars but I mean, last time I spent the six bucks was like uh, six, seven years ago. So this one should last a long time. So 15 bucks is not really a big deal. So now I've got my disposable gloves on. Uh, these are just black vinyl gloves off Amazon, really cheap. Uh, and I think I have them in the product description or in the, in the video description to link. But I like these black ones for some reason. Over the blue ones, they seem a little thicker and they don't rip as much. The, the blue ones just tore all the time on me. You hit one little edge on the wheel and it's torn. So these have worked well, and I just like to use them while I wash for the day. So let me grab my gun, move some of this out the way, and let's just give the wheel a good rinse. Clean a lot of this dirt out the well, so it's, it's filthy. If you haven't bought a pressure washer, and you don't want to spend a ton of money, this active is the way to go. So 
So I am going to ceramic coat the wheels too and make a video on that. Um, I'm just waiting because I have some ceramic brake pads coming, like I mentioned in the intro video. So I'm going to wait till I put the pads on, then I'm going to take the wheels off, fully decon, give them a good coating. So this stuff's browning immediately. You can you can tell, especially new tires, man. They whatever the dealer puts on them, they always do that immediately. So, new detail factory brush. It's a little softer, I like it. Agitates, you know it's better just rubberized around the edges too, so in case you nick your paint, the other one didn't have that a little tough shine brush. And these things are seriously brown. These wheels, I might have to wash it twice. It's turned the bristles black. But it seems like the first wash, that's always the case. I think it's a combination of the transport here, the first use, and then whatever. The, you know, the dealer doesn't clean them too well, so whatever they put on the tires as far as tire shine, it's just really dirty. So rinse out the brush so I can put it back in clean water. Get that little paint dot off of there. I also need to take a, a little blade, come clip all these little nibs off. Just give it a little cleaner look. So just this one time, I'm gonna give it a second cleaning. Look how white the foam is now because I've cleaned it once where it just turned immediately brown after. So I'm just doing that to double check that I have it completely clean which is not really browning very much. That means it did a good job in the beginning. And that's just what I like about this Adams uh, wheel and tire cleaner. It is kind of all in one and it works well. It always has. I don't think it has any kind of iron remover in it. So nothing crazy strong. It must not because it doesn't have that bad smell. But now look, I have some white foamish. It's kind of foaming. But now it's white, which means clean pretty well. One thing I forgot to mention, I already know in my intro video, <laughs> I already missed is the other car had gloss black wheels. These are black by color. So black on the inside and then like a machined finish on the outside. I thought they just matched this car better. Um, but cleaning your wheels well is the key to getting your tire dressing to stay on and to look the best and not fly all over the car so it could actually you know get into the rubber. All right so I'm using the same wheel and tire cleaner. I'm just gonna spray some on the inside of the rim now on the caliper. And I'm going to use that long, easy detail brush to get into you know, in all the spoke areas. This wheel's not as bad as, as the front. The front's ridiculous. And that's also, you know, a price you pay for having these wicked looking wheels is the difficulty in cleaning because if they were just some simple five spoke wheels. You know, I would clean them in no time. It'd be super easy. It's easy to get back there and clean them. But it wouldn't look the same. That's for sure. Okay, so I got that pretty well. It wasn't too bad. It's not too dirty in there. It's been a lot worse. Uh, so. I really don't want that to dry on the car, so I'm gonna rinse this first. So I'm gonna rinse it, I'm gonna spray it again to get all the spokes. I'm just gonna 
and give the spokes a good spray down. I use a lot of this wheel and tire cleaner. I go through an entire bottle in about two or three washes just because on, on these wheels is what I have to use so much. So I'm going to use this, I think it's a lambskin mitt because I can get in these spokes really well. That's the challenge. There's these little dips, you know, right behind the rim. Like there's this little offset or whatever you want to call it, but it's just the brake dust gets caught up everywhere. And what's funny is this, this ceramic brake pad. So I had ordered a set from uh, PartsGeek.com. I had found them on Rock Auto and PartsGeek. They're just hard to find right now because the car's so new. Well, I order them, bring them to get installed, the wrong size, and they don't fit. So it's been wonderful. You know, that was just a couple days ago on Friday, I believe. So I had to order new ones that hopefully these are the right size. They are Dynamic Friction is the brand. Um, Dynamic Friction brake pad, ceramic. It's the DFC 3000, I believe is the model. Yeah, I gotta get all in here. It's even hard to fit your fingers in there sometimes. And then I could use a lug brush to get in the center part. And it never fails. You know, once I dry it, I, I see one little bitty spot I missed or something. But the ceramic... Ceramics on the brake pads should be a game changer. And just... And just, uh... Give me less anxiety. You know, I don't know what you guys do to de-stress, so to speak, between work and family or any kind of stress that you're having, but detailing my car has always been something that I love to do. You know, I go to the gym as well. It's different. I enjoy doing that, but I don't enjoy it as I do this. I just do that so I can stay in shape as much as possible, stay healthy. It's not just for fun like this is. This will be the first time that I get to see these wheels like really clean, actually. I love that bi color. It's kind of subtle. It's not a big contrast between the black and the machine, but it's just enough. And I'd rather that over the full black, even though the, the full black wheels look awesome. They kind of give the car an overall darker look and match all the shadow line trim, which is cool. All right, we are done with that wheel. So I'm going to do the other three wheels uh, and then I'll get the camera back set up where we will foam and wash and dry when tires are all done what i didn't tell you that i did is also took my ego six uh, 765 cfm blower and right after i cleaned each wheel i blew it off just because it's kind of hot today it's not super hot but it's really bright and i didn't want anything to dry in the wheels too fast so i just blew them off um, and I, I see some water here that's spotted just because uh, the sun's drying it up so quick so i may have to move a little quick today i feel like i don't like washing in direct sunlight but Kind of don't have a choice so um, we are going to uh, foam and wash i want to show you what i'm using because i haven't used it before so this is adam's graphene shampoo now i'm not crazy about graphene or i'm not i'm not a fan or not a fan of it you know i'm just uh i just got it on a sale and i said i'll try it out you know i can't have too much shampoo as always i mainly use adam's car soap you've seen me before or the uh, mega foam so I'm also putting this in the foam cannon, so I'm curious to see how it foams. Um, and I figured, and I'm not really using it uh, to maintain a coating. I'm saving my GSF for, for that, my uh, Koshimi GSF is how you pronounce it, I think. <laughs> so, uh, so today is just graphene shampoo, foam as well with it, wash it, dry it, um, and probably top it. And that'll be it. So I've got my wash bucket set up with some of this in it. Got my rinse bucket with clean water for two bucket method. 
and I've got my foam cannon filled up with about four ounces of the graphene shampoo. So let's get it started and rinse the car. All right, we're, we're ready to rinse, wash, foam, foam and wash, obsessed garage gun and wand. It's really windy today. These, these days have been beautiful, but um, sorry about the wind if it's noisy. So I'm gonna try and work a little quickly because don't want the water to dry. You know, on a warm day, I don't want any spots in the car at all, if possible. And I may have mentioned before, one of these days, I'm going to invest in a CR spotless. But just haven't done it for whatever reason. Hadn't been bad. I mean, it's still managed okay. I just don't know how bad my water is here and how fast I would go through the resin. You know what I always do, like you've seen, is I'm gonna wash the foam dry and immediately get it in the garage. Get it out of the sun. Oh, some other good news is I should have a mini split system roughly within a month being installed in the garage. And the guy's giving me a deal on it about half price because I'm gonna fully decon paint correct and ceramic coat his truck. So versus paying me a couple grand to do that, you give me 2,000 bucks off. You know, that was never in the plan. And once he came look at the garage to quote me out, so he priced me and he said, man, if you keep your garage this clean and your vehicles this clean, I want you doing mine, so. <laughs> he said, good deal. I said, okay. So that'd be cool to make some videos. It's a brand new, um 2022 f-150 platinum so we'll be able to make some videos on that I'm trying to give it a good rinse because it was just covered this color another positive this color is it hides the dirt very well but when you get in the car to drive it and you can see on the hood it's like this layer of pollen and dust so all right, so we're rinsed. So I've got my foam cannon ready to go. Filled it in my rinse bucket. You can point that away because it will drip on you, pour on you. I'll save that for the rinse. Let's foam. This wind, it's gonna blow it all over me on the other side of the car. This is the graphene shampoo pH neutral. Let's see iPhones. Smells good. Kind of citrusy, I guess. So slightly more runny than the Mega Foam or the GSF, but it's still like, you know, everything in this foam cannon foams pretty well. I think it's more about setup than soap. The soap does help. But yeah, that's pretty thick. I know smell does not matter when it comes to product, but it's only a plus if it smells good. Usually I work on a certain side of the car depending on the sun, but the sun's kind of directly overhead today, so I don't think it really matters. You know, I'd probably wash the shady side first because there's less chance of it drying, but the whole thing's in the sun. Yeah, look, the wind is blowing this foam everywhere. And so I've got a little bit left over and I always just pour that in the wash bucket. Okay. All right, sorry guys, had to regroup a little bit. Cars foamed, I'm beginning to wash. This gust of wind comes and completely flips the camera and tripod. Uh.
For a second, I thought I broke the camera. It wouldn't focus. I had to shut it off and back on. Where was I? Oh, I was talking about spacers. So before I talk about the spacers, I guess I should talk about the tires. So this car has Pirellis. All right, there's a thing with that we kind of call it the tire lottery. Right now, I say we, like some BMW guys, call it the tire lottery right now because all these cars usually come with Michelins. And then with COVID and everything, you know, there's a shortage on everything in the world. And lots of cars are not coming with Michelins because they can't get them. So you kind of just get lucky if you get the ones. And of course, I didn't on the last one got Pirellis, and on this one got Pirellis. So I don't like them as much. I don't like the look of them as much. But the other thing is with spacers on the, uh, the Michelins, you can run 15 millimeter spacers on the front wheels. These Pirellis you cannot. So I have 12s and it really needs 15s. And uh, I bought them. I didn't film putting it on. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep them or what. Um, and I gotta take them off and redo it anyway to ceramic coat, so I'll show you then. But back looks great with 12s. I love the way the back looks all the time. I wish the front was a 20 inch rim. But it's a 19, rides a little high. But even with the 12 millimeter spacers, these Pirellis will rub just a hair sometimes. It's crazy how the same size tire, just different way it's made, I guess, could fit differently. But I do have spacers and it actually looks way better with the spacers. I have 12 in the front, 12 in the back. So down the road, once these tires wear out, I'll see if I can get the Michelins. I'm gonna keep these on for now. As far as springs, you know, I thought about putting adjustable springs. That was another thing you know, to lower the ride height a little bit, just a little bit in the back, but mainly in the front. The other problem there is I have this giant curb on my driveway. And like, if I go straight back right now and I don't go off at an angle, the front will hit. And that's without a front splitter. But had a 2016 M4, which I felt sat a little bit lower than this car. And I like completely chewed and ripped up the splitter on that car so much from my driveway being steep and having a huge curb. So, I, I mean, the reality is I may not be able to lower this car ever because if I chewed up the front, I would cry. So, we may just have to ride high in the front with our lift kit, you can call it. And I think the all-wheel drive cars back in the day used to really sit higher than the rear-wheel drive. And I think today it seems like it's not so much different, but this car does look like it sits just slightly higher than my previous one, the rear-wheel drive. You know, you mainly see a big difference in the front is what I feel like. And then, man, these clear windows, absolutely no tint at all. I can't deal with it. <laughs> can't deal with the heat. Just the, uh, it's weird. I've had tinted windows in every vehicle my entire life. It's almost like privacy. You know, and they're not blacked out, but somewhat dark. I always do the same thing with every vehicle. You know, when I was in high school and I used to get 5% limo tint all around. And then that's, that's unnecessary to me these days and for a long time. So I want it to look good, but also just have some tint and heat protection and a little bit of privacy. So I still do 5% on the very back glass because I, help, I find it just helps darken the entire vehicle. You know, the look of it on the inside. Uh, but then all the other windows I'll do I think it's 30% he has. Some people do 20, but I don't think the guy I use, Dwayne, I don't think he has a, a 20. I think it's actually 30%. But that's what I had in previous M3, if you notice in the videos. And it just looks really good. He does a really good job. 
He uses Lumar film. Seems like Expel is the big thing these days, but he's just a guy I've used forever. I trust him. I love the way he does it. I love the way it comes out. I don't know anyone who does Expel around here. This soap is definitely drying quicker today because of the sun and it caused me a headache yeah like this side of the car is almost completely dry and sometimes you know smart just to, uh i'm gonna hook up my gun really quick and look just give it a miss just any way that i can prevent it from drying i want to do that I don't like having to move too fast because you tend to miss spots, but should be everything. See, so yeah, I'm just in love with this car. It's just awesome. And I drove it last night. I went to a wedding for um, and one of my team members, someone who works for me. She had got married, and it's the first time I drove this one at night. It's the same as the other one, essentially, but I, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, number one, how lucky I am and thankful I am that I get to you know, drive something like this, and just how much I enjoy it. That wind is really kicking up again, it's making me nervous with the camera. I was lucky that it fell backwards into the grass. Now the wind direction is almost shifted where it'll naturally just fall right on the cement concrete driveway. I'm going to try and rinse this and dry it really fast so I can get it inside. And then, you know, I want to use drying aid from Obsessed Garage. It's my favorite, but it's like I'm always just trying to use some of this detail spray from Adams I have of that so much. so. I think I'm just going to use that. These back wheels look so good. And I just like the traditional blue M calipers. I think this car with the black wheels would look really good and then do black calipers. That would give it a very uniform, mean look. The more that I spend time with this car and this front end, I love the front end. I know they could have designed it differently and it still would look awesome. I do know that but it's so different it gets so much attention from the right angles like this angle on the top down the front it looks just mean so i've converted and you know what when you're behind the steering wheel you are not thinking about this grill you're trying not to put your foot to the floor because you just want to smash the gas this thing is ready to roll. An extra hose. This OG uh, pressure washer hose is the thing to go with, man. I've had a bunch of pressure washers and the biggest headache is how not pliable the hoses are and they get all kinked up and twisted and you just get aggravated with it. I end up not even using the pressure washer. But this thing, you can drag it around, flip it around, twist it, doesn't get twisted. It's just great. And that's why you spend over a hundred bucks for the hose but it's gonna last as well and I use it often so I just buy it all right we are about done with the rent and power All right, she's all dry, so I'm gonna get it pulled in and we'll finish it up in there. All right, so I got the car inside. So we're gonna do a quick dry down. I have a new towel, which is, uh, this is from Adams and it's a hybrid dry, drying towel. It's pretty large. Um, so I got it just 
on sale again. You know, I try out different things, but I think I might like this. Actually, seems very high quality. Um, I'm gonna use the graphene detail spray as a drying aid only because I have just a little bit left. So I'm gonna use that and then toss the bottle. I'm not buying any more of this. Um, it's no different than the regular detail spray, which is in here. And these are some new sprayers that Adams has that I had ordered. It's, it's, they kind of missed better and um, I forgot what they're called exactly, but it uses way less product and they just miss really well, um, which I don't need a lot of product to dry. So I'm just gonna sit that on the side, but that's just their regular pink colored detail spray that you normally see. So yeah, see this towel is just large and it soaks up everything. So I think this one will be more effective drying. Yeah, that looks really nice and be a lot quicker. I think that's the key as well as the quickness of it. Um, I can it's safe to put this on the windows but I'm gonna clean the windows anyway so this color is so forgiving as well so it makes the job a little easier and actually in here it might look pretty familiar I don't know if the color looks uh, I haven't seen it on camera yet naturally but I don't know if it looks more gray more silver uh, versus the other one was maybe a little more brown, but it clearly blends in the garage pretty well in my color scheme I have going here. Definitely got a few spots on the window. It looks like. See, I'm gonna clean up the windows well after but this towel may eliminate the need for two so I could flip it and buff it dry really easily and that comes out really nice and smooth now it might be too big to get in some of these areas nice see I'm gonna use the rest of this real quick it'll run out pretty soon All right, so I'm gonna finish drying the car real quick on the other side, and then I'll come back and show you the topper and finish up. All right, just finished drying with the detail spray. Um, it still works pretty good. You know, it's not a bad drying aid. Uh, this towel I really like though. I wanted to show it to you because it's pretty large. It does not get saturated and it soaks up any remaining water really well and uh, in the detail spray really well. So I like this. I'll try and find a link and put that in the uh, description because I really like this. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but this may be worth having a couple. Um, so next, I'm gonna put this aside. So I am gonna top it, which you've seen before, which it has a decent little slickness to it right now from the detail spray, but it's not really protection. And I'm just gonna add some slick and slide from Adams just for fun, because I like to make it a little more slick and, uh, and use this up essentially, which I typically use this on the Jetta um, or another vehicle or the Mercedes. I believe I've used it on the Mercedes once before. Had a little drip of water there. I did wipe the door jams inside. Maybe in here with the camera. I don't know how you can see if um, I'll try and zoom in for you. I'm trying to zoom in where you can see some more of the color of the interior because I'm just in love with it. It's awesome. It's really awesome. And every time you Close the doors, typically some water comes out, but I think we're good. I think I got most of it. So I'm gonna put the slick and slide, and then I'm going to do the windows. Um, oh, again, for the slick and slide, this is just a regular edgeless towel from the Rag Company, I believe. I can't remember if it's a 365 or a 500 GSM, but it's a towel that I really like. So I'm just using the slick and slide all over on the car. And uh, what I'm gonna do is finish up the rest of the car with the slick and slide. I'm going to um, use the Adams glass cleaner on the windows and on the windshield. And uh, that's gonna be about a wrap. You know, that Adams glass cleaner, I remember I use a low pile microfiber towel. It's fine, it leaves less lint and it works better. And then I'm gonna show you the tire dressing. 
at the end. I really want to show you that. Okay, so I have to finish with the slick and slide. The car itself is done. It's looking awesome. Much cleaner than I even got it from the dealer. Um, and now these wheels are really starting to look good. So this bicolor is, uh, is pretty awesome. So I'm going to show you something new. I've never tried before, so I'm trying it first time on camera. So first is this. Oops, I dropped my brush. First is this. So Obsessed Garage tire dressing. So this is something that Matt had formulated with Obsessed Garage. It's his own product. He doesn't uh, make his own products on many things, but this is one of them. And it didn't come in this bottle, so I ordered two like this. So this is a Press-All 500 milliliter bottle. I ordered the labels as well and has these sprayers. And these things are, uh, they feel pretty sturdy. And these are like 15 bucks a piece for a spray bottle compared to a dollar or so, you know, for an Adams or a Chemical Guy sprayer. So these are supposed to be legit. Never tried it out yet, so I'm about to. But also what I ordered, you know, you saw the Detail Factory tire brush. I had that new one that I cleaned earlier in the video. And then this is the next one. So this is a little stand. Um, and then this is the brush that goes with it. So this is actually a Detail Factory interior brush. And it's extremely soft and thin. Now Matt had the idea of, hey, I'm gonna use this on my tire dressing, not on the interior. And he fell in love with it. So I trust his opinion on anything. Um, I use sponge applicators, which get all over my hands and it's just kind of aggravating. Um, so I'm trying this out. I think this one was like 30 bucks. But probably my favorite thing about this is the stand it comes with because uh, maybe back here, better see it. But the problem with the other stuff is, you know, when I use a sponge applicator or something and I put it back in my cabinet, I'm getting tire dressing all over everything. Uh, so this will keep it off the, the cabinet and uh, it should stay. So these, this is also very bendable too. He says if you need to get something like kind of thinner, you know, in a smaller area on a thinner tire, then this is, uh, this is the way to do it. So let's give it a shot and see. And if any gets on the rim, I just always just touch up with a towel, just kind of wipe it off. Um, I'm not even sure how the sprayer is on this, but the key is, I might have to open up the sprayer. Well. why we're learning. Let me see how much. Okay, I right, hear it's starting to come now. There we go, now. Now it's leaking because I have it too loose. So, I think it was just too tight at first. Oh, now it's, now it's coming. So I think once it's adjusted, and uh, once it's adjusted and dialed in, then it's, it's good to go, probably. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh. So these spray when you pump in and out, it's kind of, Interesting. <laughs> I think I didn't know that and it kind of sprayed all over. So I might put a little more just to prime. And that really puts it on pretty nicely. Oh, just like a soft little cool brush. Just the way it spreads it around. Also that little edge, like there's a little rim edge on the tire it's always hard to get. So this is the first time I use the Obsessed Garage tire dressing as well. So this is where I might have to yeah, squeeze and get it in this little piece right here. Tire dressing looks good though. I don't know what's in it, what it's made of, what company blends it. Trying to tell up here if I can, if I got in that little ridge. You know, it's always hard to get on that bottom edge too with a sponge, but with this, looks like it helps a little. 
That looks nice, man. I really like that. I'm just passing a little towel just in case anything got on it. Let me check the sides over here, but looks nice. And you know, I usually give it a little time to sink in anyway for my tire dressings before driving because I don't want it flinging all over the car. So that looks really good. All right, we're gonna do the other tires. Okay, so this might give you a better view. This is the front tire, and I'm just doing this one as well, just so you can see for lighting. And I just gotta remember these things double spray. You're just getting used to it. But I could tell these sprayers are really high quality. I like how this just doesn't apply too much, and it just, it just spreads it so evenly. I don't know how he thought of using you know, this thing, which is for interior detailing. I don't even know how I would use it for the interior, to be honest. Or what for? I mean, I'm not gonna, maybe it's for dusting or something, but I don't really dust my interior. I just, I just mist it and wipe it. I'm trying to get in that little rim. I might get a little bit um, in the rim on the tire. I mean, that little ledge. And I might get a little bit on the rim, but I'll come back and give it a little pass after. But yeah, man, I like that. You know, as you use it too, I'm sure I'll get my technique a little better and get a little more comfortable with it. I'm just gonna pass this just along the edge just to make sure nothing got on it there. Came out good. All right, so first wash video is a wrap. Um, that was an easy wash for the day and it looks amazing even just as is. Before doing any kind of prep or ceramic coat, the paint's in really good shape. And again, this color hides it well if there's any kind of swirls or anything, but I haven't really seen nothing too bad yet. Um, so I'm excited to take the next step with this car. Um, just a recap for the day. Um, I used graphene, Adams' is graphene shampoo. Uh, once I use that bottle, I'm not gonna buy it again. I'd much rather the, the Koshimi GSF for foaming uh, and washing and actually even a, a rather uh, Adams' is Mega Foam and their regular car shampoo for washing. Um, so I'm gonna stick to that. Uh, and I really love this new brush uh, from the Detail Factory for the tires. Um, it just cleans easier for some reason. I guess the bristles are softer so it kind of agitates more, but these were super dirty and it cleaned great in one pass. And then um, I really love the Detail Factory tire dressing brush. So I'm definitely going to keep that and continue using that. Um, I'll put links in the descriptions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stick around. There's more to this car. Come in. Uh, window tint tomorrow. And we'll get into some more things. But um, I appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay tuned. Thanks.